What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is J.K. Whitehead from the Baseball Rebellion. Good to see you again. And uh, today we're going to do the Baseball Rebellion breakdown of the week. And I thought it'd be fun to break down Tim Tebow's swing. Uh, he's obviously a, a big name in baseball these days with um, everybody having their own opinions about him as a, as a person and all the stuff he did in football, this, that, and the other. But we're here to look at a swing purely and simply what are the moves that he's making uh, with his body that are either good or bad and uh, leading to <clears throat> his you know success or failure so far this year and right now you know it's still pretty early he's got uh he's got 140 at bats he's got um three homers six doubles um uh, so showing off a little bit of power there um batting average is a little bit down 214 right now with i think too many strikeouts you know he's got 40 46 strikeouts um 14 walks and like i said 140 at bats so it's 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 a little bit high right now um you know th there's always some getting used to being back in the season and he hasn't played a whole lot of baseball obviously kind of the wear and tear of, of day in day out kind of things uh, facing different pitchers um, pitchers also kind of figuring out hitters you know um, the more and more you play in a league the uh the more and more pitchers are going to know who you are what you're about what you can handle what you can't and obviously last year was his first kind of year in there for a little bit and People probably didn't really, uh, you know, pick up on too many of his weak spots, but they might be figuring him out a little bit. So there's going to be some adjustments he's going to have to make, um, as far as a, a mental approach standpoint. Uh, from as a as a swing though, um, yeah, I'm actually liking what I see. So I'm going to go ahead and play it for you guys. Uh, we got two views. We got the front view here, uh, from the behind the pitcher, obviously a little bit right of the pitcher. Um, then we're going to get the side view. So let's check it out real quick here. Okay, so there it is, right there, two in a row, right there, back to uh, side to side or uh, back side first, excuse me, front side first, and then side side views as we always like to do. And of course, we pick you know a home run because you know usually hard doubles and home runs are usually the best swings, and that's the ones we want to look at, not the uh, 0-2 off balance slider chasing swings that we see sometimes. So we're gonna look at this one from the front, and, and I think the first thing that anybody watching this can take away is you know he he's obviously very squatty. We know the type of person he is. He's a football player. Um, you know, muscle-wise, and he's he's kind of Bagwell-esque in the sense of you know, kind of wide and squatty. Uh, but he does take a nice little stride. But what I want people to realize is is you can have a wide stance like this. I mean, let's let's snap forward real quick to his. I mean, you can have a wide stance like this. You can see how wide he starts. If I can get it just right before he picks his foot up, right. Um, but what you're going to be able to really see here is how early he starts to move. So right here he's moving and the the pitcher has barely taken the glove uh and the ball and separated them and, and he's already started to kind of shift his weight back kind of do some stuff with his hands you can kind of see him moving and and that's something that i think a lot of players struggle with um especially once they get their swing to a different place is is the new timing of it all when you swing better you swing faster you give yourself more power but more importantly you give yourself more time to let the ball get closer to you make better decisions about each pitch and and you you know even when you're facing guys you know when you're if you're listening you're you know only 12 or 13 you know you still want to get moving early so your body can get totally prepared to do what it wants to do which is rotate uh, obviously very fast and swing very high and so you're going to see Tim start to move and he does this nice little uh, kind of heel up toe tap thing at first and you know you're going to see him pull his hands back behind him another video call he's not perfect but you can see, you can see everything that we want to see really. Um, you can see his hands kind of work behind him as he shows a little bit of that rear hip. He doesn't, he's not a big rear hip guy. You're not going to see uh, a, a ton of his back pocket right there. You're going to see maybe just a little bit. Uh, obviously, he is staying very close with his shoulders. Um, you can clearly see uh, the numbers on his back right here as he's playing for the Columbia Fireflies. Um, and you're going to see him go through his stride and, and land pretty good. We're going to see much more, I think, appropriate. Uh, when I say good, you're going to see what I'm talking about more from the side. Um, he lands a little close on that front side. Obviously, his shoulders are pretty good. He's staying close in on the ball, uh, but obviously very close with that front knee and foot kind of landing. It's not terrible, but it's also not as good as it could be right there. So one of those things that you know at the baseball brand we talk about, but it's not bad. It's not uh, definitely not the worst we've seen. Um, you can see how he does lose a little bit of height um, as he puts his foot down, but most people do, and that's okay. Um, you're going to see as he rotates here um, a very nice – downward move behind him. Now, this is a pitch that's obviously inside and kind of low, kind of tailing back over the play. This is a mistake. Uh, and he does a good job of getting below it. So his barrel works really nicely kind of back down 
behind him here, obviously behind, uh, you know, right in front of the catcher's mitt. You can see the, the, the ball in the catcher kind of moving that way towards the inside of part of the plate. And you can see how Tim really works his shoulders uh, in, in a very good manner here to get some height underneath this really low and inside pitch. And that front shoulder works very, very, very vertical. It's not obviously perfectly vertical. You're not going to be able to do that. But it's pretty vertical as far as the baseball swing goes. And you can see how his lower shoulder matches the verticality of his front shoulder, helping him get behind and below the inside pitch. One of the more difficult pitches to hit physically um, because it requires some oblique strength, it requires turn speed, it requires the ability to get the barrel uh, down to the ground. But like we tell players all the time, like let gravity help you here. Like we want to turn that front shoulder up as that shoulder, back shoulder works down behind him and the barrel is going to really just fly down this way back behind his shoulder towards the ground and that's going to help him pick, pick back up and obviously uh, bring the barrel back up to the ball as he swings up. And you're going to see a really nice rotation. Um, he actually has good vision as well, something that I was a little bit surprised of. But, uh, you know, you can see how his helmet and his face is pointed back here towards the ball. You can see this nice hip rotation out uh, with his belt. You can see his belt buckle clearly there. And uh, just a really nice job of getting underneath this ball, which is a very hard thing to do for anybody who's even played baseball for a long time, let, a guy, let alone a guy who obviously played a lot of college football and professional football. Uh, from the side view here, like I said, you're going to see the movement. Now, you can't see the pitcher, but you, you always saw him move early. And you're going to see, you know, this stride has, doesn't show that rear hip a whole lot. Lands pretty well on that front foot. Not the best, but not terrible either. But the thing that I really like about the landing is really is just the angles that he works at. So you're going to see a really uh, significant head back position here over more of his back leg, back hip, hips out in front working towards the pitcher. That's something that we really like to see. You're going to see him really stretch his hips out in front of his body when he lands on his front foot. Uh, you're going to see that nice back leg angle here. Maybe a little bit bent over in the side more than you'd like to see. I, I think that does maybe cause some issues on some higher pitches, and he might be a guy kind of like Trout, obviously not the same talent, um, or obviously not in the same conversation as far as that goes, but but uh, a guy who might struggle up in his own a little bit, and maybe pitchers are starting to figure that out a little bit about him this year because uh, he handles this low pitch pretty well. I mean, this is a nice – you can see the, the ball flight right here uh, coming in just a little bit. You can see the blur right here. So that's just coming in pretty low. <clears throat> and he handles it really, really well for, for anybody. And so, again, you're going to see him really turn his hips to the, to the right. I'm uh, really thinking about something we tell our players all the time is really working working your hips and your belt buckle to the dugout that way really fast as his front leg straightens out really well. You can actually see some back foot movement here. You can see his back foot sliding in the ground a little bit. So there's not that, there's not that rotation of the back heel that we see a lot of times in kids where they try to squish the bug. Or, or whatever that they might be taught by their, their coaches is that the heel spins and that somehow gets your hips engaged, uh, which is not true. We want the hips to engage the knee and engage the heel, and he does a good job here of doing that. Um, again, the head staying in, in a very, very fixed position. Uh, foot down here, we stress this all the time. Not, you know, this can never be ignored when we're doing one of these breakdowns as his head position through the turn is really solid. You're going to see how it stays in the box. You're going to see how his head turns in and down just a little bit, just enough to see uh, the back of the ball as he hits it. His front elbow nice and bent working up. Um, his shoulders and elbows work very, very well here in this swing where everything stays uh, connected. Nothing gets too loose and too long, um, especially due to the inside nature of the pitch. You know, inside pitches can really you know, dominate guys inside if they have a swing that's long. Not in long in the sense of the barrel path is long because we want the long barrel path. We want the barrel path uh, to go down. Like we see Tim's, you can see the blur of his back. You know, we want this barrel path to be long in the zone like we talk about all the time. Uh, but we don't want his arms and stuff to get long, especially on inside pitches. So if I'm having trouble with a player on some arm positioning and elbows working the way we see Tim's, that we want, we want their, that, this player I'm working with to do this better, I'm going to throw some inside pitches because they're going to get jammed and they're going to have to make a decision. Well, do I want to keep getting jammed or do I actually want to keep my elbows bent a little bit longer and then turn the barrel and the knob a little bit better back here behind me? And usually they were, they figure it out. And that's, that's the thing. We want to challenge them, not make it easier for them. Uh, you're going to continue to see him rotate here. Again, behind the ball very nicely. It's something that I like to point out in all my videos is you know him getting his barrel uh, between 
uh, the ball and the catcher's mitt, so you're going to see that barrel come in behind it. Again, we're not seeing anything like you know I was taught to do. Everything's kind of down towards the contact position. Uh, again, we're seeing that nice long bat path back here, which is, like I said, very surprising for kind of a bigger, more muscly guy who's, you know, frankly in a system where, you know, that's still being taught sometimes. Not necessarily the system of, of the, or the organization that he's in, but you still hear it at some of the higher levels, which is disappointing. But I think, I, like I've said before, that's going to start to change a lot. Um, and then he continues to rotate through. Now he does have this pull to the right here a little bit early, but again, it's an inside pitch, so you got to get the barrel there, which he does, obviously. Um, nice lift um, through the swing, and then you know from there it's it's uh, you know it's not the prettiest finish, it's not the smoothest thing in the world, but I think it it works for his body's type. You know that's we have to play kind of with the cards we're dealt uh, in life as far as how we swing sometimes. And again, he's kind of a Jeff Bagwell kind of lower to the ground squatty type of individual, and which is fine because that's how he probably normally works as a football player. You work low to the ground. If you stand up too tall, you're going to get blasted. Uh, so I just think it kind of fits him. You know, he, he has momentum forward, though, and that's the thing. If you're a wide stance person, he's still moving forward here. Uh, you can clearly see that, but he has his head in a nice position as he lands, rotates up through the ball nicely here. So, you know, I'm inter interested to see if he makes some adjustments going through kind of the middle of the summer here, uh, maybe gets that batting average up. I think if he just cut his strikeouts down, but, again, that's something I think where pitchers might be starting to figure him out a little bit more. They have a little more – uh, information on him, hot zones, cold zones, what he hits in better counts, and, and that's important, and all that stuff matters, so he's going to have to make an adjustment. Every every good hitter has struggled at one point or another, so we'll see what kind of adjustments he makes, but as far as the swing goes, this is a good swing on a very difficult pitch. Um, working up through the ball and things like that is, is not easy to do. I don't care what level you're at. So, Tim, uh, with, a, with a good swing here, and I uh, hope that you know he has success. You know, Let the guy play baseball if he wants to play baseball, right? I mean, we all have dreams and obviously he's good enough to compete at that level we'll see if he's good enough to continue to to go through the ranks but this swing is pretty good uh there's some little stuff with the front foot i might improve and and kind of his finish and things like that but as far as the angles that he has to work at to to lift balls at this level he's doing a good job and then you know just turning faster and things like that that he already naturally does is hopefully going to stick with him so there you have it tim tebow swing right there i'll play it one more time like i said i hope he finds success and i hope he um, he continues to bring crowds uh, to the games, but hopefully he, for himself, he continues to do a great job on the field and, and has a lot of fun doing it. So thank you guys so much for listening today. Um, we can find out more stats on Tim Tebow uh, down below this video uh, and the link I'll provide. And I hope you have a great week. Thanks, guys.